What we have here is an Aurora AS890C personal shredder. This is an 8-sheet cross-cut model. Every household should have a shredder. They're great for shredding documents, evidence, and junk mail. What happens when your shredder doesn't work anymore? Well, this. Well, basically what it does is it works only in reverse. Because of a design flaw, and I'll show you what that is, this particular shredder uses a mechanical reed type switch, and it's located in the paper slot. Right about, I can't see it at this angle, but it's right here. There it is. There you go, that little white thing. That switch is hit whenever you insert either a uh, paper or a credit card. And it runs the, um, the motor about maybe one or two seconds after the switch is released. Unfortunately, sometimes paper will hit that switch and pass it, but there'll still be paper here, or paper under the switch, and it won't continue to run. So, what happens is the unit jams up, it just stops, and you can't put anything in there because there's no room to, and the switch can't be hit, so it can't be run forward. Do you see what I mean? The shredder won't run forward anymore, so then you've got to reverse it. Now, if you reverse it, the paper backs up into the switch and jams it. Well, that's no good. So basically, we have an unusable product at that point. And I've already disabled the thermal cutoff on this thing, because the thing would cut off if you shredded more than three pages at a time. So I got fed up with that, and I went ahead, I took it apart, and I bypassed the thermal cutoff switch. Warranty void if label removed. Well, I'm afraid that ship has sailed. So let's see what kind of damage we got in here. It looks like some paper made its way into the motor housing. That's always uh, encouraging. Right by the brush assembly. Um, I did unplug the power in case you were wondering. Oh boy. <laughs> paper has made its way into the gear assembly drive assembly. Um, the motor gear has some signs of heavy wear, uh, probably from when I tried to shred a license plate. Um, and the... It looks like we have... This is the basket full sensor. And the paper input sensor is ooh, located. I think I'm going to go ahead and bypass this uh, basket full sensor as well. There's no real need for it. Okay, now the damage is more apparent to me now. This completely cracked. And that's not good. Um, this thing saw some serious pressure um, to make that break. But that's okay. Now, this used to be the uh, the on switch. And that actually, I didn't realize this, but it actually runs off of this side switch. There we go. That's pretty cool. Um, hmm. And that just broke off. So we're going to just take that out, and we're going to uh, manually override this one. And I'll show you where that thermal cutoff switch used to be. Um, yeah, right there. So I just snipped the leads off and shorted them right there. Okay. But, yeah. So. Alright, so what we've done is we've gone ahead and snipped these leads that go from the switch to the control board. And, uh, let me just make sure I'm in frame, okay. We're going to take one of these quickie connectors and just short out the leads. All this really is is a uh, you know, an off switch. It's not like we're shorting, you know, neutral and hot or anything like that or negative and positive. Just clamp it like that.
obviously if you care greatly about your shredder you wouldn't do this um, because what we're doing is we're bypassing every safety mechanism in the device and uh, we have this one as well this is another um, normally open normally closed type deal um, this one has been mutilated halfway because of its location so it's probably not safe anyway what this actually is is the power cutoff to the shredder when the basket is filled so we've actually snipped off the uh, one of the power leads so what we're gonna do is actually strip this one off and um, and put a wire nut on it. Sorry, I meant smaller, not bigger. Ugh. Anyway, um, so what we'll do is we will zip tie all this together. Just to keep it all nice and neat. Okay, let's see how she runs. First, reverse. Let's try forward. All right. All right, here we go. That's jammed. So now we're going to reverse it. Okay, we got it. Sideways. Oh no, it's going to fold and it's going to jam, it's going to jam, it's going to jam, it's going to jam. Gonna jam, gonna jam, gonna jam, gonna jam. Not gonna jam. From August 2006.
see now it's starting to fill up. Well, now I've got to do some overdue shredder maintenance. I've emptied the basket and I'm going to now oil the shredder. They actually sell a shredder oil, which I think is basically vegetable oil, but we're going to use this since uh, that's what I have. So. I don't think this is going to work, but... The whole idea behind it is it lubricates the uh, cutting wheels. Proved anything or not? too shabby.
And this is what we got. Striped ribbon cable. Fragments of Windows Millennium Edition. And license to go with. And shredded magnets from the fridge. Let's see if I can find some of those fragments. I guess not. And a heavy smell of three in one oil. That's one hell of a shredder, I gotta tell you. I mean, you bypass all the safety uh, features and you've got one hell of a machine. I mean, God, is there nothing this thing won't shred? Unfortunately, since I've bypassed one of the key safety features, if the thing switches on, anything that gets in front of it will um, be sucked in. But, you know, that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> Making it one of the most dangerous appliances I own now. Look at that thing. I mean, that thing's got, like, jaws of steel. Literally. And they're all intact. I don't see any broken teeth or anything like that. Um... And I should also point out that this shredder is not rated for shredding CDs. Uh, it was never intended to do such a thing. Um, we kind of modified it so that it would. And by that, I mean you, it'll actually get a running start. Normally you put something in, it starts up as it's being sucked in. With a CD, you really want a running start if you have a low-powered shredder like this. And that's what we've that's what we've given it. Now I get to sweep up my floor and clean all this crap up. But uh, it was fun, certainly fun. I think it's interesting how it didn't uh, slice the cable into pieces. It it really just shredded it lengthwise. And uh, yeah, but. All the paper goods were cross-cut, like they're supposed to be. Nice. What a mess. Oh, here's snakes on a plane! And, uh, that's still mostly, that might, that might still play. Yeah, that might, that might still play. You can see where the, uh, where the crosscut tines poked right through the disc. And when I put my license plate through it, it pretty much did the same thing. Um, here's the other side. It just, um, for the most part though, the, the bars set, or the, the, the cutting wheel separated far enough to basically pass the CD through. But the damage is so severe, obviously the disc will never play again. Unless you can figure out how to glue snakes on a plane back together again. Hmm. Snakes in a shredder. Look at that. That's kind of, kind of cool. I wonder where this is from. <laughs> I can't believe it still works. <laughs> 